Welcome to the Social Sciences YouTube channel. Today we have to do a core study, which is of Jonathan Kleepman's Sleep and Dreams. So let's just get into it and know the background of it. So there are psychometrics that are used in the study, which is EEG and EOG. So these are basically, as you can see in the picture uh, of the electrodes that are placed around the skull, it's basically, it will analyze the brain activity in which parts of the brain is active uh, or, you know, the brain waves. So it, in this study, it is used during the sleep. What happens inside of our brain when we are sleeping? So uh, uh, same to that, EOG is basically um, showing the eye movements during sleep and you use electrodes around uh, your eyes, eye region to do it. So I'm going to show you a video uh, of how it was done while in the study. This is um, the actual video. It is also available on YouTube. As you can see, the guy is placing uh, the electrodes uh, onto the skull and region of the eyes. Um, you can watch this video on YouTube. I will share the link below. Okay, that is it. You can watch the full video over here with all the details. It's really good to have a visual of what was happening in the study. So now, as you can see, the guy's made to sleep in his um, at the same attire that he used to wear while sleeping. So everything is similar to, uh, uh, to some extent uh, other than that it was a lab experiment. So we need to keep that into consideration. So this will be the only time uh, the researcher can meet. And now researcher will not come face to face to the um, person. Now you can see that the person is asleep, but the camera is there. So yes, the camera will be there to record the person. A little bit of background to the study was that Eserinsky, the first um, person who did that, uh, revealed that the participants who were woken up from REM sleep, which is rapid eye movement sleep, were more likely to report a vivid visual dream than participants that woke up from non-REM. So they also showed that we have a several sleep stages alternating between REM and non-REM. So there are basically five as far as I know. So aim of the study is, um, so the general aim, which was to investigate the relationship between eye movement and dreaming. Uh, there are specific as well, which was does dream recall differ between REM and non-REM stages of sleep? Is there a positive uh, correlation between uh, estimated dream duration and REM period length? So, and the third one is, are eye movement related to the dream content? We will shortly know all of these, uh, whether they were true or not. So the hypotheses were made before the research and they said that there will be a significant association between REM sleep and dreaming. There will be a positive correlation between estimated dream duration and REM period length. There will be a significant association between eye movement and dream content. We will know the answers to all of it, whether these were right, uh, true hypotheses or not. Sample was basically pretty small. So it had seven males and two females uh, that were recruited through opportunity sampling. So five studied uh, were uh, five study uh, were in detail, like five people were studying in detail and forward just to confirm the results of the first five. And so the five uh, main participants spent between uh, six to 17 nights in the lab, so approximately 50 to 77 times awakening. Um, four spent only one to two nights, so four to 10 times awakening. Participants were identified by their initials. So they were pretty much kept confidential as well. Now let's just know the procedure, what well went in the study. So participants reported into the lab before their personal bedtime. They ate their normal diet, but were asked to avoid caffeine uh, and alcohol 
on the day of the study. So they slept in a dark, quiet room. They had two EOG electrodes near their eye and two to three EEG electrodes to their scalp. So a doorbell, uh, it was uh, used um, to wake the participants up at random from RAM to non-RAM. All participants were woken up when an eye movement pattern lasted for a minute. Everyone returned to sleep in less than five minutes. What was the method used? It was a lab experiment, but different methods to test each aim. Uh, first, it was uh, the research design was uh, that it was a natural experiment. There were repeated mages design. So the question or the hypotheses or, you know, the thing was that does dream recall differ between REM and non-REM states of sleep? Um, so the IV was whether they woke up from REM or non-REM. DV was whether they recalled a dream or not. So you need to know these um, IVs and DVs for each approach, for each um, question. Like there are three questions in here, or hypotheses, you need to know them. For it, the procedure was they were woken up at various times to test their dream recall, whether during RAM or non-RAM, and dream narrative recorded on a tape recorder. It was prevented because of researcher biasness. Um, so standardization maybe, reliability maybe. So you can put these things into it by just, if you know, if you know them, research methods, then it will be perfect for you to do the evaluation of each study. So I will make videos on that as well for the each research method. So that it will be easy for you to, you know, understand and evaluate each study. So after they were woken up, they were asked if they had a dream or not. And if they did, then they recorded it. A uh, dream only counted if the recall was clear. If, uh, okay, so it could be that person, um, you know, exaggerate a lot, put more words into their sentences. We will discuss this later in the study. So for this, the results were the awakening from RAM produced a dream recall of 79.6% and from non-RAM produced a dream recall for 7%. Waking participants under 8 minutes of completing their RAMs period resulted in 5 to 17 dreams being recalled. However, however, waking participants after 8 minutes resulted in only 6 uh, out of 132 dreams being recalled. So the research method for approach two, uh, it was, uh, is there a positive correlation between estimated dream duration and RAM period length? Um, so the true experiment uh, using a correlational study, repeated major designs were used. IV was waking participants after five or 15 minutes into RAM. DV was whether participants guess on dream duration, whether, um, so for example, a participant was waking up um, at random. Okay, so the participants were random, whether they were woken up at 5 or 15, and they had to guess whether um, they had, how not guess, they had to just say the number which they thought that they had been asleep. So if a participant says that I have been uh, sleeping for 30 minutes, uh, but however, they have only slept for 15 minutes, so that would not be added to it. So why correlational analysis? It is used to cross-check participants' estimate dream duration and word count of their respective dream narratives. What was the procedure? Participants were woken up uh, after either 15 to 5 minutes into their RAM sleep. Participants guessed their duration they had dreamt for. The number of words in the dream narrative was counted after the participant reported their dream. So results for this was the estimation of RAM duration was accurate and very high. So 88% for five minutes, 78% for 15 minutes. There was a positive correlation between RAM duration and words in the recall. So the narratives of 152 dreams were collected, but 26 were omitted due to poor recording as there were 126. So you can see the chart table here. 
um, are eye movements related to dream content? So it was a natural experiment. Repeated measures, designs was used. IV was eye movement patterns. Um, remember that I talked about electrodes? Yeah, from that we will know the eye movements and its patterns. So DV is dream content. What kind of a dream was it? So participant eye movement direction was detected with EOG. Participants were woken up and they reported their dream. And then the results are that vertical eye movement, um, it, the person saw that he's standing at the bottom of a tall cliff and operating a hoist. Um, a horizontal uh, eye movement, two people throwing tomatoes at each other. Um, and vertical, horizontal, vertical and horizontal, talking to people standing close to them. A literal no movement, watching something in the distance or staring at an object. You should remember each and everything that I am stating in this video because CIA, the examinations, they can ask you a question from anywhere, okay? They can ask what the person saw in the vertical eye movement and now you don't know. So you have to remember each and every detail. I'm not putting anything extra in these videos. These are not the extra knowledge you need to know these things are to the point i'm staying to the point in this video and you can find the questions for each and every detail that i'm putting out here because cia people they they examiners they ask you little 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 details of for 201 mark you need to win one mark as well don't be like oh i don't need to remember the smallest detail because it will only cost you one or two marks but those one and two marks can give you an a grade as well so don't think about it that you have to, you know, don't have to remember any of it. You have to remember them to get those marks. So now these are the overall results. So all subjects showed the RAM every night. RAM patterns were per individual, uh, but each individual had a regular RAM pattern. 92 minutes was the average time gap between uh, different dreams. The range was 7104 minutes. The average REM length was 20 minutes and the range was 3 to 15 minutes. It was longer later in the night. Best of 2 to 100 in rapid eye movements. Those woken in non-REM returned to REM. Uh, non -RAM. Those woken up in REM went to non-REM. But sometimes went into REM to complete the final phase. So now overall conclusion. Okay. So dream occurs during... REM sleep only. Keep it, write it down somewhere. Dreams occur during REM sleep only. Dreams reported from non-REM sleep are from, uh, from previous REM episodes. So estimated dream duration and REM period lengths are very similar. Thus, it shows that dreams are not uh, instantaneous um, uh, events, but rather experienced in real time. So eye movement correspond to where and what the dreamer is looking at in the dream. Hence, it explains all that they are not random events. Strength and weaknesses, oh my God. So reliability is a high um, as it was in lab experiment with many controls. For example, the doorbell made people instantly wake up so that the dreams wouldn't be forgotten by slow woken people. Demand characteristics were avoided as participants were not uh, told whether they were in RAM or not as otherwise they would try to calling harder. So it exhibits validity as the details recorded focused on dreaming. Uh, the definition of a dream had been operationalized and asking participants to choose between 5 to 15 minutes helped reduce participant variables such as the ability to guess. So both genders were included, thus there is generalized ability. However, however, the sample size is too small, therefore limiting generalized ability. Deception of participant WD being woken up in a wrong sleep stage can cause distress. As they try recalling dreams harder, context was that participant WD had been told they'd been woken up in their REM stage of sleep, uh, but it was actually woken up randomly during REM and non-REM stages of sleep. So yes, this was deception. 
other was lack of ecological validity. As people who are used to taking alcohol and caffeine may experience atypical dreams. Sleeping in a lab connected to electrodes would be unusual, and this may tamper with their sleeping behavior. Again, uh, the ethical issue was only the deception. You can read it again if you want. Nature versus nurture. So dream content relates to our experiences. It is a product of nurture. However, the ability to dream is a product of nature. So this was the end of the video. Hope you liked it and got some information out of it. As I said that I will be making videos on the research methods because they are very important into understanding these core studies. We'll meet you in the next case study, inshallah, which is Ketter and Singer, the two-factor in the motion, also a, bio also a biological approach. It would be the third core study of the syllabus. I will, inshallah, make a video on the syllabus as well because a lot of newcomers don't really look into the syllabus, which is pretty wrong. You should look into the syllabus, even if you are a uh, college student, even if you have teachers, you have to do something on your own as well. So that is to look into the syllabus, what are important things, what is that I'm learning extra. Because sometimes what happens is that you uh, get a question in the exam which you haven't ever heard of in the study, but there is um, in the actual case study, so there are actual case study papers, but I would not recommend you to read it all, but uh, if you have time, if you love reading, uh, wanting to know more, then I would suggest you read the actual papers of the case studies. That's it all. Allah Hafiz.